Welcome to Wall TV. It's Monday, March 8th, and I'm Tyra Brown. This week's broadcast includes winter safety tips, a student senate meeting, and the inside scoop on the Prairie Grass Film Challenge. Danica Cheney had the opportunity to attend a very special basketball game. In the Hanson Fieldhouse, Waldorf University's men's basketball team is preparing for their next home game. But for Waldorf senior Michael English, away games are usually his favorite. Until like last year I didn't leave the Midwest. Traveling with his teammates is something he's always enjoyed. It's like a family away from home. It's more like a family brotherhood type thing. Despite Mike's love for away games, their next home game meant so much more. His grandmother was diagnosed with kidney cancer and was only given a few months to live. Last time I saw her was during our Christmas tournament. And that was the uh, last time we saw her before, of course, we buried her, so. I mean, it, it affects everybody at some point or another, and uh, I'm really appreciative that we've been able to do this and help raise some funds for the American Cancer Society. American Cancer Society representative Steve Lovick takes this fight against cancer personally. I had a very rare form of stomach cancer. Had to go through surgery and chemotherapy, but I'm cancer free. And so it's important that we can continue with the research, and that's what Coaches vs. Cancer and the American Cancer Society funds. The event on Saturday raised over $700 for the American Cancer Society. If you had cancer 20 years ago, the chance of surviving was 40%. And if you have cancer today, the chance of surviving is 70% or higher. Progress is being made, and Mike English is hopeful for more to come. I know it's hard, but I hope that someday they get a cure and keep some of these people on Earth longer. Danica Cheney, Wall TV News. The Waldorf Athletics Department wants to thank everyone who was involved with the event, and they are excited to hold it again next year. It's officially spring, but Forest City is still experiencing low temperatures. Arisha Menon has the story. When temperatures drop drastically below normal, staying warm and safe can be a challenge. Yeah, I'm an international student. I'm from Nepal. It's really icy and it's really slippery. While there is nothing we can do to stop dangerous weather from affecting us, there are things we can do to ensure the safety and survival. Yeah, it, it is really dangerous, so you have to be very careful. The weather has not only affected international students like Anuja Casey, but domestic students as well. With this weather, it's pretty treacherous. It's important that when you're traveling, you have like a little care package or something inside your car. Before you do get in your car, you've got a scraper to scrape your windshield. If you have to, find a shovel to dig your car out. No one can stop the onset of winter. However, it is best to always be prepared and follow safety precautions. Winter is great, but I think safety should come first and everyone should think about safety before anything else. So, yeah, that's it. Arisha Menon, Wall TV. Always remember to have a safety kit in your car during the winter months in the off chance that you become stranded in a storm. It never hurts to have an extra pair of boots, a few blankets, and maybe a few snacks. After the break, we'll take a trip to Waldorf's campus. back to Wall TV News. Thank you for tuning in. At the beginning of the semester, I was able to meet with our student body president and student senate to find out the latest news on our campus. 
On a cold, stormy night on campus, students come together to talk about issues on campus. Welcome back to Senate. This Wednesday's agenda was a new drug policy. It's a big deal because I'm allergic to tobacco. <laughs> Some students are happy about the change. I always have to carry my inhaler around because I'm always worried about it. And some students are not so happy. Opposed? It's a waste of time. I think it's a way for the school to make more money. A $50 fine is given to those caught smoking, chewing tobacco, or vaping on campus. It's not allowed to be on Waldorf campus. So you're supposed to go like... Um, across the street or make sure that you're just not on campus. The policy went into effect January 1st and will be enforced by campus security. For Wall TV News, I'm Tyra Brown. Waldorf University was already a tobacco-free campus, but with this new policy, they're hoping to encourage less violations. Students at Waldorf University are losing patience with their dorms, and Victoria Carr was able to find out exactly why. For most Waldorf students, getting into their dorm is as easy as but for students in Breen, it takes a little more effort. What should take them so long? It's been done, it's been like this for years. Senior Alex Burns has found getting into the building difficult. If it's cold out, you have to sit there and you dig through your keys, try to figure out which one to put in the socket, because you know, sometimes you have more than one key. But uh, it would be much easier just to be able to take your key card and just be. Dean of Students Jason Raymaker says that the system being down for over a year is a money issue. We got a company out of Mason City that gave us an estimate of about $12,700 uh, to repair Breen and also give us kind of a maintenance contract for the rest of campus. I just wish they'd be able to get their stuff together and, you know, sort out the problems because I'd like to be able to get into my dorm like everybody else. I, I hear their frustration. I, I share some of the same concerns. It's, it's a delay. We're looking at a door card system for the new Fine Arts Center building as well. The Fine Arts Center is scheduled to be finished October of 2018, so students will have to continue to be patient. For Wall TV News, I'm Victoria Cara. Residence Life is aware of the problem and will update the brain lots when budget is available. After the break, we'll give you an inside look on what Wall TV is tackling for the first time. You wouldn't think the cafeteria would be a scary place. There are 5.9 million kids in the U.S. living with food allergies. It happens to me on the school bus. And a third of kids with food allergies are bullied because of it. Right now, we're working on a cure for food allergies. Until then, there is a cure for food allergy bullying. You. Go to foodallergy.org to teach your kid about the seriousness of food allergies. If I'm not at school, I can't get bullied. Food allergy bullying. It's not a joke. Welcome back to Wall TV. We're glad you've tuned in. The Wall TV crew decided to tackle the Prairie Grass Film Challenge. Mitch Sheeran went behind the scenes to learn more about the process. Fine on set. Catching a burn, scene three, take one. A lot can happen in a weekend. And action. Wall TV decided to spend theirs making a movie behind station manager Danica Cheney. It's called the Prairie Grass uh, Film Challenge through Door College, and basically Mark Newcomb sent me the link saying, hey, um, you guys should do this. And at first I'm like, um, okay, <laughs> sure. Each crew must create a script from scratch and shoot a five to eight minute film entirely within a 48 hour period of time. I think everyone's just a little bit more hectic, like kind of worried about like, are we gonna finish on time? Whereas other productions we could just do it whenever we had time. But Danica is not alone. Fine on set. Joined by comm department veterans and two rookies to wall TV, Bella Ruiz and Morgan Roberts. I think it's a bigger task than we all expected, but it definitely pushes us to do our best to get it all done in the time that we have and do everything that we can to help. I really enjoy working with everybody on the crew. They're all really passionate about what they're doing. And then the Baskin family um, volunteering to help us out. Um, that's just amazing. It's just fun to work with them. We're lucky that we found such, uh, such natural-born thespians like my, uh, like my mom and dad to, <laughs> to play those parts. Maybe in the future, if we get good at it, maybe we'll make a, maybe we'll make a family movie sometime. 
Unlike any other project they've created in the past, only time will tell how this film will turn out. It's just really great to see that everybody is coming together to make the film challenge possible. <laughs> Mitchell Kieran, Wall TV News. The Wall TV crew was glad to network with other filmmakers and are excited to apply what they learned for next year. That's all for tonight's broadcast. Join us next week to learn about the new Hanson Fine Arts Center, Skate with the Warriors, and how floral shops are preparing for Valentine's Day. We look forward to seeing you next Monday at 8. For Wall TV News, I'm Tyler Brown. Good night. Thank you.